So what we find is if we keep the number of neurons the same, or the, uh, then there exists an ideal depth. Now, there's lots of reasons for this difference. No? It could be that, uh, the, that it affects expressivity. It could be that it affects what we can learn concretely for our implementation. Or it could uh, require uh, relate to a more general notion of learnability. What the reasons for these graphs are, we don't currently know, and it's very hard to know. So, last week, we saw that there's many cases where the dynamics of linear learning can be stood analytically, which is beautiful because it gives us some intuitions. What if we could understand the dynamics in multi-layer perceptrance? Well, first, that seems impossible. Because, look, it's this highly complex, deep learning system. But, but let's see if it might not be possible. So the first thing is, let's just see how linear training is. Imagine you have a very large neural network. Do you expect the weights to change more or less as I make the network bigger and bigger? Well, maybe a bigger network needs less changes, but that's just an intuition for the moment. Let me just remind you of how big networks are getting. Here's some uh, text uh, processing models where you see they're getting into the billion parameter range. So they're getting really quite big. So I don't know, like how big, uh, how much do we expect learning to really change the weights? Well, there's only one good way to find out. Take a biggish network, train it, plot how the weights change, and ask yourself, um, does it make small or big changes? And is learning linear or nonlinear in this case? We can just empirically have a look at it. 